So what I want to do, we, I saw we got some super chats in here, which I'll hold off until the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to touch on, uh, you made a post the other day, a poll mm -hmm. asking our audience <laughs> how yeah. big they thought we, Elite FTS was as a company. Yeah, how many employees? How many employees? Yeah, that was interesting because Matt came in the other day and we were just talking about different marketing aspects and stuff like that and looking at through competitive i do a competitive analysis every mm -hmm. six months you know whatever competitors doing <laughs> what products pricing all this kind of stuff and then how are they marketing what are their offerings all that and i also look at content and we put out a lot of content mm -hmm. and when you look at <laughs> when you look at who our competitors are you know, things get a little cloudy and that falls back on me from the messaging that we put out. Mm -hmm. Our competitors are not other YouTube channels. Right. We, we, right. we don't sell content. Mm -hmm. You know, hell, we just, all we're trying to do with the YouTube is to, to break even on one staff member and mm -hmm. like busting our ass to try <laughs> to be able to do that. And, but that's not who our competitors are. Our competitors are other people in the industry that are selling gym equipment, gym accessories, and stuff like that. People, products people used to get stronger. Mm -hmm. So when I go and look at their stuff, and this is kind of where the conversation came with Matt, I'm like, Fuckin ain't none of these people got any content at all. <laughs> you know, so this is, and I'm like, this is our competitive advantage, mm -hmm. but nobody knows we sell products because we don't do any content. <laughs> Based trying to sell our products right. like all of our competitors do they got 300 followers mm -hmm. so then it's kind of like now wait a minute if we got 118,000 subscribers on YouTube mm -hmm. and they got 200 and they're outselling us by 500 percent maybe we should probably do some videos on our power racks right and maybe we're too and I've already known this maybe we're too heavily focused on content or that's probably the wrong way to look at it. We're not focused enough on product. Or then by looking at that and looking at the, the size difference, you know, with competitors. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, and that's part of what I was looking up. Like 300 employees, 500 employees, you know, the biggest one in the industry is, you know, 1,500 mm -hmm. employees. Um, closest, and some of our closest competitors are like 80. 50 that's a lot you know and and that's why matt said uh -huh. you know <laughs> people come in here you know how many people that, so i put the poll out there mm -hmm. and the the numbers were you know under under 20 employees was 43 percent. so those people were correct so i'll give the exact number here in a minute you know 21 to 49 was 30 percent. 50 to 74 was 12 percent. this is kind of funny 75 to 99 was four percent which I, that must be like if you anybody who's got a company never have between 75 and 99 because that's like that's like <laughs> bad luck or yeah, some right, shit right and then over 100 employees was um 11 percent which with over 7,000 people you know you put that across it's 700 people think we got over 100 employees is like fuck. that's incredible we got what was the we have 13 <laughs> full-time employees yep. and two part-time uh-huh and I'll explain that a little bit. So when we say we're a family business, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people say that. It's like, Bob Evans is a family business. You know, it's like, no. 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 I don't think Bob's in the back no. cooking. No. <laughs> I mean, for us, out of the 13, you know, Tracy's 60% owner, I'm 40% owner. Um, Blaine, mm -hmm. you know, is now helping with bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. My other son, Bryce, is doing a work study with one of our manufacturers. My sister-in-law, Lori, is the warehouse manager. <laughs> yep. You know, during the um, heavy seasons, her daughters come in and help with the shipping. So that starts, you know. That's half the this employees. Is a third of the employees, <laughs> yeah. you know, are my family. Mm. And then once you get out of there, there's, um, what I write down here? There, there's Rhonda, Sheena, Matt, Ken, John. They're all seven years plus. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them, mo I mean, like one of them's pulling it down to seven years. Ken's been with us since day one. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at 20 years. Matt's over 10 years. Rhonda's over 10 years. You know, so they're, at that point, it's kind of like family. When mm -hmm. somebody's with a company for eight to 10 years, you know, by default, you're kind of like 
family, but not not like birthdays and shit. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, right. we have birthdays, I guess. That's yeah. <laughs> frequent parties for that. And then, you know, there's the newer guys, you know yourself, and um, Megan and jacob my, my writing so bad i don't want to forget anybody so see it's fucked up i got like 13 people and i gotta look at the names of the people to remember them but i didn't want to forget anybody yeah and so that that's what it is and it's when it's it's a family family's not see i, I never like to and lean into that because mm-hmm. i'm not your family you're not i mean it's, yeah it's a culture of a family type environment which Mm -hmm. is different than a corporate type environment it also means people wear a lot of different hats Mm -hmm. you know to be able to do what we do and by doing this for 20 22 years you know our i think the most employees we ever had might have been like 15 and Mm -hmm. we're we're hiring now so once we get everybody filled you know i forgot one because the accounting just rolled over and there's he's going to start next week so when we get where we're supposed to be, you know, because then we'll have three extra. So what's that? Four, 13, 14, 15, 16, plus two part-time, mm-hmm. 18, so 18. So kind of kind of close to 20. By no means does that mean we, <laughs> I, I would like a hell of a lot more, right? Because, I mean, how many hats are you wearing? How many hats is you, know, yeah. you wear? How many hats? I mean, we're all wearing all these different hats, but it's all in this weird type of spot because, the say the one hat you're wearing if we were to give it to somebody else it's not really full time you know and then so you would have mm. we, we need to <laughs> you need, oh yeah you absolutely. need capital to hire more hire more people which is part of that where the emphasis has been on the growth of the business from day one was the aim of the company hasn't ever changed and that's to live learn pass on you know it's become a branding statement for a lot of people but i don't think they see it the way that i do Mm -hmm. and again that probably falls back you know on my messaging with that because to to truly embrace what that is isn't easy you know, it, it, it's, it's not because when you do what I consider the right, and it's my right thing, it's not going to be somebody else's right thing. <laughs> but when you, when you, when you over give, mm-hmm. right? So you over give and then I'm just as guilty as anybody else. There becomes periods of time to where you're like, all right, we've been given all this shit. We've been given all this shit. Um, what, at what time are we going to see anything back from it? Then you get pissed. Because now, wait a minute, everybody else is charging for this shit. Yeah. So nobody values what we put out there. So why we fucking bother? Mm-hmm. Then I do. I, you know, I'll get wrapped up in that. You've seen me get wrapped. Everybody here has seen me get wrapped up in that. Mm-hmm. Then I have to separate. I have to get the fuck away from people and go back to what the fuck we are here for. Right? We are to help those people that need the help. Like I needed the help when I was in high school to find training, to be mm-hmm. able to get better and to be able to change their life. If that means we're going to be the smallest fucking company on the block all the time, but we care more than everybody else, fuck it. Then that's what we're going to do. Absolutely. Because that's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. You know, I still feel in my heart that at some point, cause if, if I was to show the growth of the company since day one, We've never grown by more than, well, in 2020, we grew by like 12.7%. Mm-hmm. So the highest growth we've had year over year. COVID played into that, but at the same time, we lost a lot of suppliers and partners at the same sure. time. But that's it. You know, so I'm still waiting. It's like at some point, and I probably told you this, I've told, at some point, we're going to have that fucking year mm-hmm. where everything doubles, just like everybody else does. Yep but it's been 22 fucking years, you know? So then I go back and it's like, well, it's been 22 fucking years. Yep. Maybe that won't ever happen. But then if I say that I lose hope, I lose faith. And then what the fuck am I doing? Right. Then what are we doing this for? Mm -hmm. And so that's the other part of the staffing company issue that it's hard to move forward because some people are going to buy into that which is harder to buy in than what people really think it is. And other ones won't. Mm-hmm. 
you know, then there is the whole other side of the business analytical side of when you have uh, 13 people, how much time and resources can you continue to keep putting into content that really should probably be going to advertising? And they'll say, well, content is advertising. I kind of mm, beg yeah. to differ. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, it's, if it was, we would be <laughs> five, you know, five times as big right. as what we are. And which the, the thing that kind of, that kind of made me laugh. I mean, I'm not frustrated by this at all, but because 43% of them kind of get what's going on here. But the, the ones that were over a hundred percent of the whole time, cause I think it's stupid shit. I mean, like, do they listen to the podcast? Cause they listen to the podcast. If we had over a hundred employees, would I really seriously be worried about doing audits yeah. on our fucking podcast? <laughs> right. You know, how much expense are we putting yeah. in per episode, uh -huh. you know, to be able to break? I was like, no, we're, I put the time into how much, you know, effort, and money goes into each episode of the podcast because that can be going in something else mm -hmm. that would generate revenue because we have all these other sources of content. So that's not to say we we're, we aren't looking for, but I'd love to have fucking 10 more employees. Oh, but for sure. You know, it's, it's, it's like those people that come to you and like, you know what you ought to do? You ought, <laughs> you, ought, you ought to make your own fucking bars. Like, okay, so who's gonna buy the equipment? Mm. Where's that money gonna come from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's going to fucking make them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, then it's, where I was going with this is the manufacturers that we have, especially now, post-COVID, because I would have said this before COVID, but I would have been wrong. There, there have been built on relationships that have been built over a decade of time. So I trust them and know they can do what they do best. Mm -hmm. Build fucking great equipment that isn't going to get people hurt that's going to last fucking forever and do what it's supposed to do that's what they know that's what they do let us do what we do best which is you know help people get stronger mm -hmm. help them know how to use the equipment let me pass on let me do what i can do let's do this so you know you we all do Mm -hmm. what we do best mm -hmm. now does that lower my profitability of course does it lower their profitability of course does it work well it's been helping us for 20 years so obviously it's working because it helps there is it creating dynamic growth probably not mm -hmm. but i would rather not have the dynamic growth and do what this whole thing was founded to do and then go down that other path and so those relationships and we got a handful of manufacturers now mm -hmm. that I couldn't ask for a better relationship, mm -hmm. you know, with that, you know, and, and I hope they say the same and I'm sure they do. Cause we've had, it, oh shit, <laughs> you know, I mean, last year was crazy, but yeah. even before that, when you go through all this diversity and all this, you know, different things with different manufacturers over a period of time, you, you start to realize, you know, you depend on them, they depend on you. And then there's nothing that we can't figure out. Mm. And then that's kind of where it goes from there. Now, the ones that were a little iffy, you know, they're, they're the ones that bolted and went direct to market in 2020, which is fine. You know, I'm not going to bitch about that because knowing, had I known that, I wouldn't have been partners with them in the first place. Right, 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 right. You know, because we are a core, small family type business and that's who I want to do business with. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to do business with these fucking Goliaths that treat their people like shit and they're not putting out any content to help people. They just want to sell tons and tons and tons of shit. Mm -hmm. I, it's fine. I understand that. I understand why people buy it. It's cheaper. I, I get it. I understand it. That ain't going to be me. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's got to be core values in what we do. And so that's kind of my rant. You know, no, I, I, I like it. I mean, it's, it's to be on this end of things. And like you said, we all wear plenty of different hats on a daily basis. You're doing all sorts of shit from, from mm -hmm. posting on Instagram to doing all these deep dives on, in terms of like mm -hmm. suppliers and, and competition and whatnot. And then it's like, it, I'm, I'm like looking around the office and it's like, I'm doing like the other day I, I did an install with Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, and I like we, we just went up and helped us well up to high school set up their mm -hmm. their new weight room and it's like I think people get lost in I mean and it's and it's a a positive I look at as a positive if people think that we are bigger than we are it means that we are able to portray a certain amount of professionalism a certain amount of you know it uh, means in their mind we're competing with people who are 
500 times bigger literally 5,000 times bigger <laughs> yes right at least on brand name mm -hmm. now product sales you know it might be a little different story right but at least we're in the same conversation mm -hmm. you know as what they are yeah and i think it, even at looking at the youtube right like our, our goal is to essentially cover the cost of an employee mm -hmm. with our youtube but the fact of the matter is we're still competing against youtubers we, we <laughs> Which, are to we some are. extent to some right? extent. like we're not like we're not knocking anybody out of the park but we're knocking on the doors of some of these people and it's like that's pretty fucking cool man yeah because that's, that's not, pretty that's fucking not cool. I, I don't i don't want to name my competitors but, right you know I, well I mean, Rogue's obvious, so I'll put yeah, that right. out there, they're right? Mean, so, I mean, they're the the, the biggest humongous. around, and I'm not going to take anything away from them. Mm -mm. Fuck, they supply 1,500 jobs in a market today where people need yeah. work, you uh -huh. know? So I'm never going to complain about what they've done. What they've done has been amazing. I mean, they started after I did. I mean, it's fucking destroyed us. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, so I have nothing bad to say about them, and their, their YouTube is different. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got 2 million followers or whatever it is, but... You know, even if, how much of that content is instructional content that's going to help people get better. Mm -hmm. You know, they got movies and they got great stuff, you know, but even there, you know, so now you take that and start looking at it. There's a lot of our other competitors who are doing way more, way more sales than what we are that have seven videos on YouTube. Right. You know, so the, the one side of me is like, well, when it comes to our competitors, we are absolutely fucking destroying them. Mm -hmm. when it comes to youtube if we get 75 views we beat them right because they got like 23 yeah <laughs> you know so but you know if their 23 views are all people buying power racks yeah exactly well then they're fucking destroying actually financially they're beating us so it's a balance that we mm -hmm. got to figure out and but to your point <laughs> it, it, it's I don't know how to say this without saying it kind of a little fucked up. It's kind of fucked up that if we're beating a YouTuber. Yeah, no shit. No shit. <laughs> I mean, that's not what our prime focus right, is. Right, right. You know, our prime focus, you know, our prime focus. So that's, and I it, guess that's the call out there. But at the same yeah. time, we don't have to, I mean, we're trying to work the algorithm. We're trying to do all this other stuff. But there's a line that we're not going to cross because we still are a company that sells products mm -hmm. and you know, you still have to have integrity with the grant brand. You can't just, I'm not going to do a video saying so-and-so says you shouldn't do this. He's an idiot. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to do that. You know, and that's how YouTube works. Like right. find this guy who just did something stupid or not, and then call him out because mm -hmm. he's got more followers than you do. Oh, for sure. It's a game. You know, and then you watch and you see, well, now the five other people just called out the same guy for the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, what kind of rabbit hole? What kind of life is that? You're not helping anybody. No. Well, you're entertaining. Yeah. You know, which is fine. You're entertaining. But this live, learn, it isn't live, learn, entertain. entertain. You know, it's live, learn, pass on. We want to help people to become stronger, become better. And I think that from a competitive standpoint, we've done it for 22 years. Mm. So even if you can say, hey, this company, you know, or whatever has, puts out great educational content, mm -hmm. two decades worth. You know, and what are their scars from doing it? There's, there's the other thing. Yeah. You know, I and mean, that's the brutal reality. What are their scars from doing it? Mm -hmm. You know, how many times have they, you know, I don't want to go to, I mean, how many times have they lost sleep looking at a profit and loss statement trying to figure out what the fuck is going on? Why are we putting all the money here mm -hmm. instead of here? You know, so it doesn't compute that way, you know, but I'm human. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, 2020 was rough. You mm -hmm. know, for me, it was rough. And that could be a different conversation for a different time. That was really rough when it came to testing mm -hmm. what the aim and the vision of the company really is. And I won't lie about that. Anybody that followed me through that time knows that. Mm. You know, and it, it's taken a while, you know, to be able to get back, you know, the, the, where it needs to be. And never, I never let it stray you know, right. completely away from that. But it was, it was, it was rough. Plus, oh, yeah. plus it was a lot of the good part. I don't believe I just said that <laughs> because what I'm going to say next, the good part of it, there was so much shit fucking up everywhere mm -hmm. that it kept me so preoccupied trying to fix all the other little things that were fucking up mm -hmm. everywhere that I didn't even have time to focus that much on it. Mm -hmm. So then when I did focus on it, it was all negative. Right. You know, so then it's only been in the past four or five months 
you coming on as a catalyst for that to to start to see mm -hmm. you know where starting to put a mirror in front of my face mm. you know and and listen to myself mm -hmm. and say what the fuck did you just say you know where 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 is this at where is this going mm. and um so it's in a way kind of recalibrating but doing it such that we don't end up going down a, we still want to grow absolutely I mean, that's, that's right the, that that's the point i do think over over i'm just rambling at this point but over decades i don't think i was concerned with that enough well i think it one of the important takeaway messages is that if someone and this this is actually a pet peeve of mine so this may end up in a little bit of a rant myself but <laughs> i think people don't realize that when they're dealing with us they're dealing with a human on the other end of the instagram account on the other end of an email, on the other end of a YouTube video. Sometimes I'm the one reading them. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing is like, it's not this massive company where we have this customer service department of 50 people all just ringing phones off the hook. It's like customer service, Rhonda. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean? Like it is one of the biggest things I want people to realize is if you were reaching out to us, if you're commenting on something, you're commenting or reaching out directly to somebody. It's either me, it's you, it's Rhonda, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. Matt. Like these, <laughs> these characters that you see are not just characters in this giant, giant network of corporate, you know, mm -hmm. just craziness. Like it's like you said, thirteen full time. Mm -hmm. Like that's <laughs> half of them your family, yeah. and it's like it's like we're you got to remember. And that's one of the, it's a positive for us as well. It is, you're going to get your question answered by, oh, yeah. by someone in the building that knows what the hell they're doing. Mm -hmm. That can, that can help you get better. Right. Like I'll still get emails or messages like, Oh, what about this exercise? How does this look? And I'll, I'll take the time mm -hmm. and I will answer those and I will help them with a program. I'll help them, you know, point them in a direction of, of an article or, or mm -hmm. something that's already on the site. Um, but I, I really want people to realize that, that they're not just talking to the to the ether. Oh yeah, they're not just talking to this. It's like the company, like the mm -hmm. company's people. It's yeah. made of people who give a well, shit. Well, people that have lives too. Yeah, I mean that's the other thing too. Is you know, outside in Tracy and I, I mean, I work all the time. I, mm -hmm. I clocked in in 1998. Right. So I well, <laughs> still haven't clocked out. Right. You know, but that's that comes with owning a company mm -hmm. and Tracy's the same way she's doing three different jobs right now mm -hmm. so that's just what it is but you know customer service it's nine to five so if they're getting a reply from Rhonda it's because she's doing this at home mm -hmm. and it's after five but they get pissed well I can't believe you don't have somebody it's like what the fuck yeah, are you talking what do you, about what do you want me to do you know it's yeah. like you know she's allowed to have Thanksgiving too mm -hmm. you know and all this other kind of stuff so they, they, that's where the only time I ever get involved and it's very very rarely at this yeah. point because you guys let's put it this way if, if any of you guys have to pull me into any type of situation like that so it escalates to me mm -hmm. it's not going to be good for whoever whoever's yeah. on the other end because <laughs> honest to god i don't even want to hear what they have to fucking say oh yeah i no. don't no. because if it's gone through you know two or three other people to me then at that point in time you're treating my staff like shit and you're an asshole and i don't give a fuck what you have to say. <laughs> exactly it's just i don't care yeah um but that's that's it was funny because last week um you and no it was jacob was sick and i for matt came in for some reason and no you were you were out jacob was sick matt come in and he's like the fuck <laughs> you know because yeah, right um megan was out yeah so Jacob was sick. You <laughs> were like, out. Is it Sunday? Right. It's like <laughs> Sheena was the only person upstairs. Yeah. Blaine was sitting at the desk. Uh, accounting is in transition. Yeah. And um, so Matt come walking back. He's like, like fucking four people. Here. That's what started this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Do people realize that you know if people are calling off sick or they're out of the office, there's like five people here. Yeah. And I'm like, no, they don't realize that. Yeah, no. And I, no. So that's when it was like, I bet they think we have hundreds of people. Oh, yeah. And it's <laughs> Definitely not the case. 